one of the reasons that your website might be slow is because you've got massive images and photos on your site without really realizing it. Now, massive images uh, will uh, slow down the perceived speed of your website for your user. But Google and search engines will also penalize you in two different ways. One is they will push your ranking down. And two, if you're spending money in Google Ads, they will actually increase this, the price of your clicks. My name's Duncan. My company is called 65, and we build, care for, and host WordPress websites for our clients. And with more than 10 years worth of experience in this area, I'm going to show you how to identify those massive images, make them smaller so that your website takes along much better. Now, before we dive into this, it's worth mentioning that optimization of your website and its speed is a big topic. It is not just about images. It's not just about your hosting. It is also about where your DNS and your domain is. It's also about uh, how your theme is built, how many bits of you know, content there are that are assets that go into building the page out and so on and so forth. And even down to some of the code it can be written very inefficiently as well, because when it downloads, your computer has to do a lot of work in order to render all of the design, all of the images and so forth, so that you can actually see it, display it and work on it. So in this video, we're going to talk about large images. I'm going to show you how to find them. And then we're going to go to work on reducing the size of said image. So here's my sample website. And I've got just a the Hello World, Hello World blog post. There's nothing else going on on this site. It is using the default 2024 theme. And I've embedded the image in a couple of different ways so that we can kind of see what's going on. So the first one is just into the blog post as an image, nothing else happening. The second one is embedded as a background to a section. So when you use a background image and then the third one, you can see is slightly larger. What I've done here is I've embedded it using the full size option when it put it onto the page. So let's open up the post and I'll show you what that looks like. So here's our first image using the original aspect ratio and I'm using a resolution of large. And so what that means is that WordPress is going to take my original image, scale it or resize it for me appropriate to this large context. And large means that your theme has actually defined these particular sizes so that uh, it will automatically create those sizes for your theme, the, the most optimized for your theme. The second section, like I said, is just a background. And this is one of the biggest culprits for losing or, or finding massive images. And we can see in, where are we? The, oh, I'm looking at the headline. I should be looking at the block and, and the container. There we go, that's why I can't see it. All right, so if we look at that, there we go. That is giving us um, the image. Now this should be um, essentially the, the full size image, right? Raw from our computer. And then the third version, I've used the full size option underneath resolution. So again, should be the full size of the image. So let's go see what this looks like. I'm going to cross over onto the page. I'm going to open up that blog post. And as you can see, there's our image, there's a background image, and there's the full size version as well. So how can you tell which one of these is massive? It's going to be really slow. The way to do that is to either right click and click inspect. And I'm using uh, Google Chrome here. Now we're not going to, we're going to ignore the first tab here. The tab we're looking for is this network tab. And I'm going to tick this box that says disable cache. And I'm just going to reload the page. And you're going to see that we've got all selected here and it's going to show us an awful lot of stuff. We don't actually want to look at all of that. What we do want to look at is images. So I'll select IMG for image and it's going to filter that list of assets that have loaded to build this page down to just images. And it's going to show us we've got a 396K image that took 600 milliseconds to load, and a 587K which took one second to load. Now, because we've disabled the cache, that should give us a pretty typical example about what's going to happen. And, you know, nearly one second to load an image is too slow. This is a simple page. It's only got one image on it in a various sizes, but your typical web page has, you know, 10 more images to load every time. So obviously imagine that this has been multiplied by 10. You've potentially got 
10 seconds, so what, eight to 10 seconds worth of loading, and no one wants to wait that long. Our attention spans are just too short these days. So how do we treat this? How do we make this better? So in order to find that image, just pop into your media library, okay? And uh, over on the media and then library, find the image, use the search using the name of the image, really helpful. And what this will do is it will tell you how big the image is, the file size, and also tell you the dimensions of it. So there's two ways to optimize images. One is physical dimensions, screen, uh, you know, make it physically smaller. That means there's physically less data. And the other one is to uh, compress or optimize the image, which means that uh, all of the data that makes up the image can actually be squished, can be made smaller. There's a lot of stuff in the background that isn't really required when you're viewing. It's really useful when you're editing or it's useful when you're on different um, devices. For the purposes of a website, most of the time you don't need a massive image. So something that's at two and a half thousand pixels wide and 500K, uh, if it's, and very often you'll see uh, websites with megabyte sized images, you gotta get those and you gotta get them down and make them small. So how do we do this? All right, so I've got my original image and actually my original image is 4.7 meg. So the first bit of good news here is that when I uploaded this into WordPress, it went, nah, that's crazy big. I'm gonna make that smaller for you. And it restricted the width or the height, the longest edge to 2560 pixels. So it's actually a good start, but it's not good enough. Um, and that's obviously a default setting in this theme. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this image smaller ourselves. I'm gonna show you how quickly these numbers change. The tool I'm gonna to use is PhotoP, photop.com. It's uh, available uh, for free. And it sounds obviously very much like a very popular paid for product, but for the purposes of what we're trying to do, it actually does an awful lot of what we need. In fact, it does everything we need and we don't need to pay for a product to do it. So I'm gonna go file. I've just dragged it in and I'm gonna go file. Sorry, I'm gonna go image, image size. And that 5,760, I'm gonna reduce that just down to 1,200. Now, the reason I'm only going to go to 1200 is the vast majority of website designs are not much bigger than 1200 pixels. Okay. And the reason for that is because the vast majority of screens that people use are not much bigger than, you know, 1500 pixels. Now, I'm using a MacBook here today, um, and the resolution of a MacBook is, let's go see. Uh, displays, where is it? Displays is 2560 by 1664. Okay, so mine's 2500 pixels wide. Um, it is also a MacBook, so there's a duplication um, It's because it's a retina display. So the actual number of pixels wide is 2560 divided by two. It's only 1280 pixels wide. Now, almost every website is not the full width of your screen. Um, it's only about 1200, or it's probably just slightly larger than 1200 pixels wide. So as you can see, we don't need an image that, and I'll show you if I open it in full screen, here's my image in full size, right? Like that's no good to anybody. No one's gonna scroll up and down. Um, and you also don't want people stealing your original image and going using it elsewhere, for example. So making it slightly lower resolution is not a bad thing. You know, if you're a photographer or you're selling art, you also don't want to be putting your original um, up on your site in your testimonials, etc., for exactly the same reasons. All right, so I have now, let's just recap there. I went to image and image size and I just changed that to 1200 pixels. And now what I'm gonna do is file export as, and I'm gonna keep it as a JPEG. It's a photo, JPEG is the best format for that. So I'm gonna go JPEG and I'm going to call that Save, there we go. Okay, so now I've got my original image, which is 4.7 megabytes, and just by reducing its physical dimensions, it's now 105 kilobytes, significantly smaller, all right? So that means that when this image loads, uh, even at 400K, that one, so we've reduced it by, um, we're going to have reduced it by a factor of four, that 500 milliseconds it's taking to load is probably gonna to drop to about 100 milliseconds in just in one go, just in that one action. Now, if you wanna take it a step further, and I highly recommend you do, Tinyfy or tinypng.com is a great little service to do this. 
So click to uh, open your new image. Okay, you're, you're already resized. So we've got a 105K image here. And what this will do is that second version of compression. It will reduce the amount of data in the image without affecting the, the image quality and give you a smaller one. So again, you can see here we've got a negative 11%. It's now a 94K image. All right, so now we've downloaded that optimized version. What I'm going to do is call this one optimized, and I'm going to call this one resized. Okay, so I've got an original. A resized was the biggest change, 4.7 meg down to 105K, and then the last one is 94K. So that's now our optimized. Brilliant. So now we've got a really much smaller image. How do we get that up onto the website? So we can go into a media library, um, and in this case, uh, I don't have any ability to replace that image. Replacement would be really cool. So what we do is we use this little plugin called Enable Media Replace by ShortPixel. So I'm going to go install that now. I'm just going to go up to Plugins and Add New, and I'm going to search for Enable Media Replace. Click on Install. All right, so now I've got that plugin installed. I'm going to activate it here. And then we're going to go back to our media library. And if we go find our image, we're going to see there's a whole bunch more options available for us to be able to deal with that image. Open up our image. And now we're going to see we've got some new fields down the bottom here or some new options. We're going to replace the media by uploading a new file. Okay, so now comes the magic bit. So I'm going to uh, find the upload a new file button on the media that I'm trying to replace. And on the left, it's going to show me the 2560 by 707. And I'm going to go grab my new optimized image and just drag it and upload it into here. So immediately it says, well, your original was 4 meg, your new one's 91. Oh, that's because I clicked and it's now 1200 by 800. So we've definitely got what we need. Now, uh, the trick here is to use the new file name uh, and update all the links. The reason for that is that the image when it's embedded, especially when you're using it, say, in backgrounds uh, on the container, like the container that we've got, uh, the system won't quite keep those in sync. And those things are very uh, theme dependent as to how they implement them and where they are. So therefore you should use the replace the file, use the new file name and update all the links if you can. You will still need to double check this after you're done, but um, for the most part, this will do what we need it to do. So let's click on upload. Uh, that didn't work for some reason. Let's try that again. Let's get our new optimized and click on upload. There we go. So now I've got a new media. So the next thing to do is just go check it. And now it says there's a 92, 1200 by 800 image. So that's a good win. And the next thing to do is go and look at our post and see what has happened. So let's go view the post. And the images are all still there, which is superb. Now, if we right click and inspect and we go to network like we did before and go image, making sure we've got disable cache. We're now seeing that the size of the images is 100K and 94K. So much, much smaller than we had before, where we were in the 500k range, we're now down to about 108 and 94. Uh, the time to load is, again, very subjective. It's partly because of my internet and my location in relation to the server. And for whatever reason, it's actually slightly slower now than it was when I started this video. But the fundamental is that we've made the image smaller. So therefore, the general experience of any of your users is going to be better because those images are now smaller. So, big win. That's the very manual way of doing this. Uh, I might do another video on how to do this a bit more of an automated fashion. However, this is really good practice to get into in your editorial workflow to make sure that the images you're uploading are not too big in the first place. Automations and other systems uh, don't have the human eye to be able to say, well, I need to crop it in this particular way to make it work. So knowing what you're faced with in order to make the automated systems work as well as you can, doing it manually is actually a uh, really good practice. So thanks very much for watching. If you liked this video, if you found it useful, please like and subscribe below. 
and we'll see you in the next one for more WordPress website and optimization tips and tricks.